Hello students. Today we are going to discuss with you a beautiful poem by William Wordsworth. The title of the poem is The World is Too Much With Us. As the title of this poem suggests, Wordsworth here is regretting our too much attention that we are paying towards worldly concerns. The title suggests that we are engrossed in this world more than we should. Let us see the first line of the poem. The world is too much with us late and soon. The second line is getting and spending we lay waste our parts. Little we see in nature that is ours. We have given our hearts away a sordid boon. So this is the first quatrain of the sonnet. This poem is actually a sonnet. 14 line poem. And see its rhyme scheme. Soon. Rhymes with boon, parse rhymes with ours. So the rhyme scheme of this quatrain is A, B, B, A. Now see what Wordsworth wants to say in this quatrain. The world is too much with us. He means to say that we are too much attached to this world and by the world he means worldly concerns materialism materialistic concerns he means to say that human beings are too much devoted towards materialistic concerns Late and soon, getting and spending. Late and soon means during day and night. Means all the time. Every time what we are concerned with. What do we think? We think how to get money and then after we have earned it, we think how to spend money. So, this is the only concern. This is the only anxiety. This is the only worry of human beings. How to earn money and how to spend money. We lay waste our powers. So, we are wasting our capabilities, our faculties, all our intellectual powers in earning money and in spending money. So, if according to Wordsworth, if we are using our intellect, if we are using our brain power for earning money and for spending money, it is a wastage of our power. It is a wastage of our intellect. It is a wastage of our talent. So, he says, we lay waste our powers. Little we see in nature that is ours. Little? What's the meaning of little? Little means nothing. Little we see in nature that is ours. So, 
we see nothing. Little means nothing. Little we see in nature. It means we see nothing in nature. That is ours. The nature which is really ours. Which is our real well-wisher. Which is our real benefactor. Which is our real teacher. We don't see anything in that nature. We don't see anything. It means we don't give any importance to that nature which is our real benefactor. Little we see in nature that is ours. We have given our hearts away a sordid bone. We have given our hearts away. Means we have devoted our heart, our brain, our intellectual powers, our emotional powers. We have given our hearts. Means our hearts are engaged. And where are our hearts engaged? Our hearts are engaged in materialistic gains. And according to Wordsworth, it is a sordid bone. Means the money, which the materialistic things which we are concerned with, they are sordid. They are useless. They are valueless. They are trivial. And our hearts are devoted to these trivial things. Instead of looking towards the beauty of nature, which is our real benefactor, we are looking towards materialistic gains. And that is a matter of regret. Really, that is a matter of regret. This sea that bears her bosom to the moon, the winds that will be howling at all hours, and are upgathered now like sleeping flowers. For this, for everything, we are out of tune. So, again see the rhyme scheme of this quatrain. Moon rhymes with tune. Hours rhymes with flowers. So, again the rhyme scheme of this quatrain is A, B, B, A. Like the first quatrain, soon rhyming with boon, pars rhyming with hours, and in this quatrain also, moon rhyming with tune, hours rhyming with flowers. Okay. So, the let us see the second stanza, second quatrain. This sea that bears her bosom to the moon. Just see the beautiful imagery. The sea is the beloved here and the moon is the lover. And the sea wants to embrace moon. So, as you must have seen during full moon days there are tides it seems as if the sea wants to touch the moon the sea wants to embrace the moon it's a very beautiful imagery the sea that bears her bosom to the moon the winds that will be howling at all hours. The winds, there is a music in winds. They are howling at all hours. They are making different types of noises. They are creating different types of sounds. So the winds that will be howling at all hours and are gathered 
now like sleeping flowers so in the evening perhaps uh, wordsworth is composing this poem during the time of evening and during that time for some time winds are calm winds become peaceful they just uh, become quiet for some time like sleeping flowers it seems as if the winds go to sleep for some time in the evening like the flowers so and are up gathered now like sleeping flowers here is the figure of his speech simile the winds have been compared to sleeping flowers for this for everything we are out of tune for this means for these images for these beautiful pictures of nature for this for everything for everything means every other natural scene every other natural thing mountains rivers meadows grasslands for all these things we are out of tune we are out of tune means we are not compatible with all these natural things all these gifts of nature we are out of tune means we are not compatible with them we don't want to live in the company of all these natural objects it moves us not words worth is so much full of regret it moves us not so all these natural imageries all these divine objects these rivers these trees all these divine objects which have been created by god himself which are created by nature herself they move us not they don't touch our heart they don't attract our sight our eyesight great god great god so he is just condemning our behavior great god oh my god i would rather be a pagan suckled in a creed outworn so might i standing on this pleasant lee so this is tercet first tercet b rhyming with lee and outworn stands alone so the rhyme scheme here is c d c it moves us not great god oh my god i would rather be a pagan pagan stands for old religions where people worshiped different types of gods all those religions 
people worship idols and different type of gods those religions are called pagan like hinduism also we are also pagans according to uh, those standards of religion whosoever worships many gods whosoever worships idols is a pagan so wordsworth says great god i would rather be a pagan so instead of being a christian who takes no interest in nature it is better to be a pagan instead of being a christian without having any interest in the objects of nature it is better to be a pagan so if a person is a pagan he will worship all the objects of nature like uh, in our own religion hinduism every object of nature is a god river ganga ganga maiya cow gai mata so and uh, let us see our uh, uh, mountains uh, giraj mountain in govardhan it's also a god so if we are a pagan we see god everywhere in all the objects of nature we see gods and goddesses so if we consider that a certain tree is a god for example we worship peepal tree we worship bargad tree so if we worship a tree like a god we can never think of cutting that tree so perhaps uh, these ancient religions they uh, established this belief that in all these objects of nature there are gods every river is a goddess ganga is a goddess yamuna is a goddess so we will not think of uh, doing any harm to our mother to our father because in the all these objects we see our fathers our mothers ganga is a river our mountains they are just father like for us so we will not harm them we will not harm a tree a peepal tree or a bargad tree or any other tree because we see gods and goddesses in those trees in those rivers in those mountains so we can never think of harming them perhaps that was the uh, reason why our forefathers established this belief of seeing gods and goddesses on all the objects of nature so here also wordsworth is saying i would rather be a pagan suckled in a creed outworn suckled means nurtured brought up fed up so i would rather be a pagan a person who believes in an old religion of multiple gods so it is better for me to believe in that religion to be nurtured in that religion suckled in a creed creed means religion faith sect outworn outworn that is obsolete outworn means obsolete means out of use old ancient which is not in use now means which has been discarded outworn means that something that has been discarded 
so the old uh, pagan paganism which has been discarded now i would rather like to be a part of that old religion instead of being a christian who doesn't worship nature so might i standing on this pleasant lee have glimpses that would make me less forlorn have sight of rising from the sea or the old triton blow his reed horn so so might i standing on this pleasantly if verse verse says if i uh, give up my own religion and i become a follower of paganism then i might see gods and goddesses everywhere standing on this pleasant lee pleasant pleasing beautiful attractive lee means grassland meadow so standing on this beautiful grassland on this green grassland on this green meadow have glimpses glimpses means sights scenes that would make me less forlorn forlorn means lonely if we see a soul in every object of nature for example if we see that if we trust if we believe that there is a soul in every plant in every tree in every object of nature we will not feel lonely wordsworth means to say now i am standing here alone in this meadow in this grassland and i am feeling lonely because i am a christian and i believe that there is only one god but if i am a pagan i will believe that there is a soul in all these objects of nature which are which are before me which are in front of me if a tree is in front of me i will feel that it is a living entity it is an animate object not an inanimate object not a lifeless object it is a living object it is an animate object it has soul inside it so if i have this trust that every tree has a soul inside it and if i am standing i am sitting under that tree i will not feel lonely because i have the trust that this tree is a living entity this tree is an animate object this tree has a soul so have glimpses that would make me less forlorn when a person is pagan he will not feel forlorn have sights of rising have sights of i think something is missing here let me confirm yes 
my dear students please uh, here is a misprint in this book so have sight of proteus so the word proteus is missing from this line please correct it have sight of proteus rising from the sea so proteus is a sea god that can change its shapes so if a person is a pagan he believes in different gods only a pagan can believe in sea gods like proteus and triton so wordsworth says if i am a pagan i can see the sight of proteus rising from the sea or hear old triton blow his reed horn triton is also a sea god and it is believed that he has a conch in his hands conch in hindi we call it shank so triton is supposed to blow a reed means garlanded reed means a garland of flowers so it is supposed that these sea gods come out of their abode they are visible to human beings during daytime but they are visible only to those who trust them like pagans those who don't believe in them these gods and goddesses are not visible to them so this is our poem and as you see it was a sonnet a poem of 14 lines uh i had already discussed with you the rhyming scheme of this poem let us see it once more the first line ends with soon and soon rhymes with boon so soon a parts b ars b boon a so the first quartet is a b b a then the second quartet moon rhymes with tune ars rhymes with flowers so the second quartet again has the rhyme scheme a b b a then we have the first tercet and the first line of the first tercet is uh, it ends with b and b rhymes with li so the rhyme scheme of the first tercet is Uh, c d c then forlorn rhymes with horn and c rhymes with li so the rhyme scheme of the second tercet is d c d that is the rhyme scheme and as you know it, it is uh, classical sonnet because it is divided into octave and sestet the first eight lines means uh, the lines that are that contain uh, two quatrains first eight lines starting from the first up to the eighth it is octave octave means a collection of eight lines and the remaining six lines they make a sestet so the octave is divided into two quatrains 
and the cestet is divided into two tercets. This is uh, the division of the sonnet. One more feature of a classical sonnet is Cisura and Volta. Cisura is a pause that is at the end of eighth line. Let us see whether we have Cisura here. Uh, the bone at bone, the first quartin ends, the second quartin ends at tune. We are out of tune. So, here there is a small pause. We are out of tune. It moves us not. Now, there is a turn of thought from this line. And this turn of thought is called Volta. So, I, we are out of tune. Here is a pause. And that pause is called Cisura. Then from the next line, there is a turn of thought and that turn of thought is called Volta. It moves us not. So from this line, there is a turn of thought called Volta. So it is a classical poem, very beautiful poem and I am sure you must have enjoyed this poem. Thank you.